News every 15 minutes, weather every 10, and sports twice an hour. News Talk KGVO, AM 1290 and now 101.5 FM. You're listening to Montana Morning with Peter Christian. A new trial for Old Horn. Good morning, everyone. It's Montana Morning. It's Monday, June 30th, 2014. I don't mean to be a bummer, but you realize that summer's already almost a third over? Yikes! All right, we've got 45 degrees in Missoula right now. Clear sky, just a few high clouds out there. And our newscast this morning, sponsored by Tempride Service. For all of your plumbing and heating needs, call Team Blue, the local experts, 728-1111. The Montana Supreme Court has upheld the lower court ruling, granting a new trial to a man charged in the July 2005 beating death of a former chairman of the Confederated Salish and Kootenai tribes. Clifford Oldhorn was convicted of deliberate homicide in the death of 73-year-old Harold Mitchell Jr., and then he was sentenced to 100 years in prison. Well, he appealed, arguing that statements he made to investigators shouldn't have been used against him because he believed he had immunity. The Montana Supreme Court says that statements made by officers led Oldhorn to believe he would not be prosecuted. Prosecutors have said without Oldhorn's statements, they likely could not gain a conviction. A 33-year-old man is required to register as a violent offender has been arrested in Great Falls on suspicion of stabbing another man. The Great Falls Tribune reported that Christopher Floof faces a charge of felony assault with a weapon. Charging documents say Officer Rob Beal encountered Matthias Blackhoop before 5 a.m. Friday. He says he had been in an altercation and that Floof had stabbed him in the arms and abdomen with a black and silver folding knife. Blackhoop was taken to the hospital. His injuries did not appear to be life-threatening. Well, state Republicans here in Montana are working to close their primary to help prevent crossover Democrats from influencing pardon me, influencing their elections. Current Montana Secretary of State Linda McCullough, though, is a Democrat, thinks things sh- should stay the way they are. Well, my opinion um, is that I support the current law. I, I don't think it's a good idea to close primaries um, because it, it, you know, it, it closes it to everybody. And so it closes it to those. We have a great many independent voters. Um, and we've had an open primary since 1912. I, I would want to continue with that. McCullough says she hears calls for closed primaries from both parties every year. Every election we have people from both Democrat and Republican parties that claim that people cross over. My gut feeling is that, that people don't cross over. And, and besides that, some of those people might be, I mean, we have a great many independent voters, some of those people might be independent voters who, you know, who vote sometimes in the Republican primaries and sometimes in the Democrat primaries, and they're allowed to do that. Twenty-six states in the District of Columbia use the closed primary system. In Alaska, the Republican primary is closed, while other parties have open primary. The situation may come to Montana as well. The fine for illegal use of a mobile electronic device or cell phone while driving in Helena will increase from $75 to $105 tomorrow. Municipal Court Judge Bob Wood says the hope is that the higher fine will discourage repeat offenders. The independent record reports the city wrote 132 citations from January to March and another 163 from April to June of this year. Under the Helena City Ordinance, the use of hands-free accessory or hands-free cell phone while driving is allowed. The Civil Rights Act anniversary is being celebrated in a big way in July, especially the U of M at Mansfield Library. Donna McCray with the library says Mike Mansfield, for whom the library was named, had a big role in the early civil rights legislation. One of the reasons that he's so important in particular in the civil rights 